Welcome back everybody. Today I want to go over how I've been farming the new ether sands that were introduced in Dundra. These ether sands will be used in making master book recipes that will be added in patch 7.05. As always, all the links will be in the description. Real quick before we begin, this video will have some minor spoilers for Dondrea. I'll be showing zones from the second half of the expansion. I won't be discussing the actual story, but this footage will be prominently showing the end zones. So if you don't want to be spoiled, I highly advise stopping the video now and coming back after you finish the MST. Okay, there are four new ether sands that were added and I'll be going over how I've been farming three of them. I won't be going over the sunglit ether sands, but links to the notes and their times will be in the description and they follow the same farming pattern that I show in this video. The first ether sand we'll be farming is the Mithru ether sand. We can find them by farming them volcanic grass collectibles on a botanist in the living memory. The nodes are time sensitive and only spawn between the hours of 4 p.m. and 8 p.m. in game time. During this time frame, you can collect as much volcanic grass as you want, and I'll be going over the way that I utilize to get the most I can in the time I'm given. As you can see, my botanist is almost completely max geared and pentamailed. My offense still needs to be replaced with a high quality, but I have more than enough stats for this farm. In order to get the most out of collecting attempts, this graph was added in my FC's Discord. Couldn't find the original source for the graph, or I'd probably credit them. Though as it shows, I began by casting Primal Touch, followed by Scrutiny, then Brazen Prospector. This should get me around 500 collectability. Next, I cast Scrutiny again, followed by another Brazen Prospector. Hopefully this will cap me at 1000 collectability. Not, yes, another Brazen Prospector. Now that I'm over 1000 collectability, I cast Ageless Words to give me an additional integrity, and I have a 50% chance to proc Wise to the World, which will give me an additional integrity. So with a perfect node, I can grab four Volcanic Grass. Once I'm done, I immediately pop a High Cordial and keep them on cooldown. Now, before Dawn Trail, I would say to just sit at the next node until your GP refills to over 900. But we now have the trait Revisit, which has a chance to proc after every node and will refill all our GP. So while I'm waiting for my GP to refill, I'll be running to each node, use Brazen Prospector until the collectability is over 400, and just collect those, hoping for a revisit to proc. I'll continue doing this until the nodes vanish at 8 p.m. Now that I've collected all these volcano grass, I need to extract the ether sand from them. By clicking on character, you go to actions and traits, click on general, and near the bottom should be an action called Ethereal Reduction. This ability will allow us to extract the ether sands. Just click on it, and after the first time, it'll give you the option to auto extract the rest of the collectibles. By doing this, I usually average about 30 ether sands a session. You'll also receive a nice chunk of crystals and clusters. Oh yeah. We now have a four hour in-game break or roughly about 10 minutes of downtime before we head to the other set of living memory on our miner. This time we'll be farming bright wind ore from midnight till 4 a.m. for Mythlome Ether Sand. Just like my botanist, my miner is almost completely pentamailed besides the main hand. We'll use the same strategy to farm the most 1,000 collectibles as we can. The only difference is that Ageless Words is replaced with Solid Reason. Otherwise, farm these nodes the exact same way and try to get as many collectibles as you can within the four in-game hours. Once done, be sure to use Ether Reduction on all the items and enjoy the loot. The final ether sand we'll be going over today is the Mythbra. These are found by fishing up clay ran carp. You'll need a versatile lure and the lake we'll be fishing from is right here inside the miner farm. The most important thing I need to stress before you start fishing is make sure you have collect turned on. This will allow us to catch the collectible versions instead of just their normal versions. Don't be like me and spend 20 minutes farming for these fish and then realizing it was a waste of time because collect wasn't turned on. I don't know why it's not automatically set up as collectible, but regardless, make sure the collect is on. To catch this fish, begin by just casting as normal. You'll then need to cast Ambitious Lure until it says a dark form looms. You can attempt this three times per cast. If after the third attempt the text doesn't pop, cancel the cast and retry until you see that text. Once the text pops, the fish can only be caught on a two exclamation mark. I found that double hook and triple hook does work for this fish. So if you're lucky, you can get three fish from one catch. I'll keep high cordials on cooldown and try to catch as many fish as possible. This farm has no time limit, so I tend to do it while I'm waiting for the other ether sands time windows. This is a nice, chill, relaxing way to farm, but there is a much faster way to farm Mythbride. In order to use this other way, you'll need to have spear fishing unlocked. Next, head over to Shilani 
and dive into the lake in the northeast corner, the fish we're trying to spear is the long-nosed gar. These are the biggest and fastest fish, and you can collect a lot more of these fish in the same amount of time as just doing regular boring old fishing. And by using shark eye too, the game will even tell you where the next note is, keeping you from swimming around aimlessly. This method is a bit more engaging than just fishing. You actually have to pay a little attention, but you'll farm the ether sands much quicker. Now that we're done farming the ether sands, let's take a quick look at the current prices on the market board. Normally, I would use Universalis to give a broader price gauge, but they've been experiencing some technical difficulties lately. So I'll just look up the prices on my home server. Each of the ether sands are currently selling for about 6,000 gil each. And it looks like they average about 4,500 to 6,000 when sold. With 30 sands per farm, even at the lowest value of 4,500, that's 135,000 gil in about 20 minutes of farming. These prices will likely go up when 7.05 drops on Tuesday because everyone will be needing them for their raid gear and consumables. In fact, these will be in high demand for quite some time. Last raid tier, I would sell them almost instantly for ridiculous prices. So my plan is to collect a stockpile and wait until Tuesday to either use them for my own crafting or just straight up sell them. This is how I've been farming these three ether sands preparing for the release of 7.05. As I stated, there's a fourth ether sand that's being used for version one potions, but I'm not sure how relevant it will be once the master books are released. As stated earlier, it follows the same farming methods shown in this video and the farming locations can be found in the links provided in the description. I hope you enjoyed this video. I would love it if you left it a like and also consider subscribing. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks for watching. Bye.